In this video, two news items related to council tax, which I think you're going to struggle to believe. The first of which I think is downright cheeky, and the second I'm willing to bet that local authorities are not going to want you to know about. But lucky for you, I'm a barrister who helps you understand the law, and I'm not going to let that slide when there's a tip that I can tell you that is quite likely to save you money. So before we go any further, if I could ask you a very small favour, if you could hit that subscribe button, because I noticed that around 60% of you that watch this channel are not yet subscribed. Now you might not think that's important, but it really is, because it means YouTube will spread this channel to more people, and I can help more people to save money and to understand law. So thank you for doing that, and let's get on with the video. So the first little news tidbit about council tax that I think is a little bit cheeky is that various local authorities are going to increase the council tax in order to fund the funding gap to pay for policing services. Now why do I think that's cheeky? Well it's twofold really. Now the funding gap, to explain this a little bit further, is the difference between the amount of money the local authorities get for policing services and the rate of inflation. Because the rate of inflation of course means everything gets a little bit more expensive. So to break this down to very simple terms, if the police have to buy a new vehicle, that vehicle has gone up in price compared to the last time they bought a vehicle and the last time an amount of funding was agreed for the local authority for their local policing services. So in a very very broad sense, things get more expensive, but the funding doesn't go up enough to compensate for how much more expensive things get, resulting in a gap between the two, a finance gap. Now who pays for that gap? Well, this latest idea from local authorities is that you are going to pay for that funding gap, because various local authorities are increasing the local council tax by £5, £10, £15 or even up to £20 in one particular local authority in order to be able to fund the local policing services because the funding that they get from the government for those services is not in line with inflation and is not enough money. That's the first reason I think it's cheeky, because they're asking you to pay for that rather than get the funding from where it should come from, which is government funding which ultimately is already coming from the taxpayer. The second reason I think this is cheeky, now this is not to go for every police service, so I'm not slating police services across the country in unison here, but some of them that I've mentioned on recent videos where some people have had vehicles stolen and they've been tracked to a particular location, but the police are simply too busy to do anything about it and refuse to do anything about it. And secondly, although there are lots of mobile phone thefts, particularly across London, where there is a mobile phone theft and the person is standing outside of the building where the phone is currently located, ringing the police to say, I'm outside, I'm going in to retrieve my phone, can you please help? And the police just simply say, well, we can't do anything, maybe we'll be there in a couple of hours, but you're free to knock on the door yourselves. And in that scenario, I'll link that video below, that person did knock on the door, they had company, now I don't recommend you doing this because you don't know what you're going to meet when you get to the front door of someone that's clearly stolen your phone or the recipient of a stolen phone, but nonetheless they went to the door and they retrieved the phone, all without the help of the local policing services. However, that's the second reason I find this cheeky, because on the one hand lots of people are just not being able to retrieve their vehicles because the police say they're underfunded, understaffed and just don't have enough time, presumably and ostensibly relying upon the insurance companies just to fund the payout because the vehicle's been stolen and not recovered, and therefore the insured person and the insurable event which insurance covers, because remember any insurance will only pay out with an insured event, meaning something must have happened. The best example I can give you is that if a wall just falls down by itself, there's no event, it just fell down. Whereas if there's a storm or somebody breaks it, then they've broken the wall or the storm's broken the wall, that's an insurable event. And even then insurance companies have various policies in place to prevent claims and payouts for those kind of things. But I digress, we're talking about someone who is relying upon their insurance to pay out for the vehicle because the police didn't go to retrieve it, even though it was tracked pinpointed to a specific garage in a specific location, which I can only imagine is happening dozens or hundreds or even thousands of times across the country. Nonetheless, you are now going to be asked by various local authorities to pay for the funding gap between the funding the police get and the funding the police need because of the rates of inflation. That's news item number one. News item number two, just to briefly remind you, is the one that I think some local authorities are not going to want you to know about. 
Because we're all talking about money here and local authorities will obviously try to retain as much money as they can, sometimes they can and they will retain money that actually they shouldn't have had in the first place. What I'm talking about is overpayments. Now here's the bit that you probably won't believe and I don't think the local authorities will want you to know about and I'm obviously being very slightly cynical and tongue-in-cheek here when I say that of course on the surface they will want you to know about it because they want to educate you as to exactly what your rights are, what happens with the money and the overpayments, what should happen to it, when you should get it back and all of those kind of things. However, the law does not require the local authority to inform you that you've made an overpayment. So if you've made a payment to your local authority for your council tax, which is over and above that which you're supposed to pay and required to pay, and then you move house or something happens and they don't know that you've moved house or whatever, then the council may just retain that money and there's no obligation upon them to let you know that you've made this overpayment. Now ordinarily this will write itself because if you remain in the property and you've made an overpayment that overpayment should be netted off your next bill so it will count as a payment towards your next council tax bill. On the other hand however unless there is a change of circumstances that brings this to light or you ask for the money back because you've made an overpayment the council is not obliged to tell you that you've made this overpayment and then the clock starts ticking for you to make a claim to recover that money which ordinarily for simple money claims is going to be six years so ordinarily speaking you're going to have six years within which to make a claim to get that money back let's say you've moved house and you didn't get the money back let's say someone else moves in and just starts paying the council tax the council is not necessarily under any legal obligation to tell you that you've overpaid because you've moved out. And if you don't bring it to their attention and nobody notices or nobody realises, no one's going to tell you and you will be that much money poorer because they just didn't tell you. Some local authorities, according to the article that I read by the BBC, which I will link in the description below if you want to go and read about it any further, some local authorities did say that they would go back as long as necessary to refund you if overpayments were brought to their attention. But of course that depends where you are, it depends how they operate and it depends how cooperative they are. And as one final bonus for this video you might remember that I did a video previously about no obligation with council tax and there was one snippet of someone else's video that I was commenting upon which was in fact correct on a very narrow interpretation. And very briefly speaking this very narrow exception is that there is no obligation upon the person moving into a property to notify the local authority that they've moved in and they are responsible for the council tax. Although don't confuse this with the type of scenario that I discussed in my other video which I'll link in the description below where the council tax did ask whether there was anyone living in the property or whether this person moved in or moved out and the answers given were dishonest so ultimately they were charged with fraud but the ultimate underlying obligation to notify the local authority that there's been a change of residence in the property doesn't exist but if they ask you the question you must of course answer honestly. So I thought you'd find that interesting but please check that out in the description below as well and in the meantime please do remember to like this video and subscribe because it really does help my channel grow. It helps to keep me motivated if my channel grows to spread it to more people so that I can help more people understand law, solve your legal problems without you going to a lawyer and without this being legal advice because if you find your answer for free and it helps you and it helps you to win your case, solve your dispute, solve your argument, get some money back, save some money, stay out of pitfalls, avoid scams, all of the above I'm doing on this channel. So thank you for watching, thank you for liking and subscribing and I'll see you next time.